I'm about to turn on your sound there a little bit, Speedy. Okay. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Transition Tuesdays for this Tuesday, December 28th, 2021. I am your host, Russ Williams. I'm so glad you could be here today. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today, ladies and gentlemen. I know you could have been anywhere in this world today, but you decided to be here with me. And I appreciate that. And more importantly, I appreciate you. So welcome to Transition Tuesdays, ladies and gentlemen, on this last day of us filming in 2021. Man, we're going on four years strong, about to make our fifth year coming up in 2022. Man, we got a special guest here with us here. I'm here live at the Rock, Rockville, Maryland here for our last show. And again, we got an action packed show with a great guest there. But before we begin and bring, I bring this person out, I always like to state my intention. And my intention is to give you the opportunity to laugh, smile, think, and engage in honest conversations about your life's transitions. So that's what we do here on Transition Tuesdays. And speaking of honest conversations, I have on here on the line, I have my guy here in which we're gonna, I'm gonna bring him out the right way by giving this extensive intro to my guy here. So my special guest is a streetball legend, ladies and gentlemen. He hails from the Bronx, New York. We attended Morris High School. My guest played at Megas Evers College where he averaged a whopping 26 points per game. This guy had game and he looks like he can still play too, all right? So later on, my special guest played with the world famous Harlem Globetrotters. He played in the Continental Basketball Association, which was known as the CBA, and played 10 seasons in the USBL and the Harlem Wizards. My guest, my special guest also served as a basketball advisor, consultant, and he starred in the iconic basketball flick Above the Rim, starring Dwayne Martin, Dwayne Martin, pardon me, Leon. Marlon Wayans and one of the best rappers to ever do it, Tupac Shakur. This guy was in that, he was in that movie. He, he, he orchestrated the basketball stunts. We're gonna talk to him about that. And last but not least, my special guest is a college basketball coach. He's one of the cleanest dressers in the game. This guy is one of the cleanest dressers in the game. So ladies and gentlemen, Transition Army, please help me welcome Mr. James Speedy Williams to the Transition Tuesdays. Speedy, what's I'm up, my right, brother? I'm all right. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Did, did that intro suit you well, man? Did I did I help you over this <laughs> intro, man? You did. You did great, man. You did great. I love it. <laughs> Can you see me? Perfect, man. Perfect. Hold on a second. I think people are trying to check in here, man. Hold on a second. Bear put us um all right what we got here all right all right got you all right cool man there we go now he's on here like hey, it is speedy yes i need to see that face there we go cool all right hey speedy man i play i play music for my guests and i want to play this song for you man i want to i want when i play this song for you i want you to tell me when you first heard this song what you know what was your experience like hearing this song Okay, because this has a lot to do with you. All right, let me just rock this one here for you. Hold on one second. Here we go. <laughs> hey! Hey! SW, baby. SWV. Anything, SWV? Man. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, so when, you know, okay. So that song was on the soundtrack of a famous movie. So talk to me about that, man. When you first heard that song and you saw like the video for that, I think I might have saw you in the video up in there, like stealing the ball from Bird, you know, from people. Talk to me about that, man. Well, that was uh, an amazing CD. It was actually number one that year, the same time the movie came out. So that was the number one soundtrack. And the song. That CD was like amazing, mm -hmm. but you know, the movie was like <laughs> one of my best times. You know, I I, I got a, another closer look at Tupac and yep, you know, got the norm on a different level and okay, seeing mm. how real was and mm -hmm. oh, like like the the neighborhood loved him. 
So, yeah. you know, he didn't run with security guards all the time. Like, mm. he just, you know, adapted to the hood. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. The filming. Yeah. So, cool. Cool. Hey, yeah, hey Speedy. We, yeah. We, uh, hey, man, we're going to talk a lot about your, you know, you know your experience on the set of Above the Rim. You being a star, and all, I, hey, I think you should. I think you could have got a Grammy for that for your work in there, man. I mean, Oscar. <laughs> I think you could have got an Oscar, dog. <laughs> nah, I did my part, man. You know, I did my part. There was a lot of great people on that set, actually. Mm -hmm. A lot of good ball players, and you know, players that were standouts. Right. And right. I was fortunate enough to, you know. Be one of the players that they was interested in, and you know, going against one of the stars, which was Dwayne Martin. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now we we gonna we gonna get into that, man. But you know, I'll be remiss if I didn't ask you, man. Like I asked all my guests, Speedy. You know, how how are you and your family coping with with you know with this pandemic, which is the you know the uh the COVID, you know, pandemic that we're going through, like, how are you and your family been coping with that? Like, have you lost any people or, you know, any people affected in your family at all or? Oh, well, it, it, it's been pretty tough, you know, thank God, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, everybody in my immediate family was really mm -hmm. affected, mm -hmm. you know, to the point where it was, you know, a death was involved, right. but other uh, than that, you know, my family basically, you know, we we stayed away from each other. You know how it is as yeah. you know, they go on. You know, everybody has separate lives and everything, mm -hmm. and everybody thinks different. You don't know what your other family member is actually doing. Right. So you know, now day times and times when you normally have family gatherings, mm -hmm. you. you don't go. You reach out to each other, right? And, you know, thank FaceTime and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. to reach out and you know touch your loved ones yeah. without having to act be there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that worked out good. You know, uh, you know, God willing, we all be here and be able to fight through this pandemic yeah. all the way to the end. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you know, I know you. What what school you at now, coaching at Speedy? Um, I'm an assistant coach at Hostos College. Mm -hmm. It's a junior on 149th Street in the Grand Concourse. Okay. And we really well through the years, the girls and the boys. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like our girls, it was exceptional for a few years in a row, you mm -hmm. know, to back to back national championships and, right. you know, yeah. champions and conference yeah. champions. Mm -hmm. And then the boys, you know, they go to the championship and the conference and everything mm -hmm. and went to the last year. So mm -hmm. it, it was, it's a good look, you know, the, you know, the guys are a little bit responsive to, you know, the coaches getting at them, letting them know what happened before they got there. Yeah. And now they are to follow suit, you know, to push on, to do sure. better. Sure. A girl. The girls, they're, they're just amazing. I don't, mm. I, I don't ever want to put nobody down because of uh, the fact that, you know, people probably looked at me that way, like uh, like mm. I was an overachiever. So, you know, um, that's what these girls did. Mm -hmm. These girls mm -hmm. was written off in a way and um, yeah. with the new coaching and everything else. And they just picked up where other girls left off. Mm. You know, uh -huh. and we're, we're winning this year. Both the boys and the girls been ranked since the beginning of the year. Um, yeah, that's great. This this conference and regional titles. Man, that, to the now. that's that's cool. Hey, so you guys been able to navigate through this protocol, like COVID protocol? How has that been? Has that been kind of difficult? I would imagine it would be. That, that's very difficult. But then you're talking about. Kids got to get tested every week, and you have to wait for the results to come in before they able to enter the building and things of that nature, you know. And now it's a it's another task where kids come in. Mm -hmm. You know they yeah. they doing their class online, yeah. on their phone, stuff like yep. that. So you know, mm -hmm. 
makes it even harder. You know, you got work study and everything else that's going on with mm -hmm. our students. You know, to hear that a student don't have to come into the building that day is it, tough. Yeah, it's tough. Definitely tough. Yeah, man. Yo, no, we gonna we gonna talk about that, man. But I want to talk about the legend of Speedy Williams. You know what I mean? We, hey, hey, Speedy, we might, you know, we might be kin to each other. You know my last name, Williams. You know what I mean? Like, like some people say, same plantation. You know what I mean? Who knows, man? But uh, you know, we might be kin. You know, we might be kin folk. We probably are, man. We gonna go over that. But Speedy, man, talk to me about how was it growing up in the Bronx in the BX, man? For you, like growing up, how, how was that for you, man? Oh, man. Well, as far as having a great childhood, mm -hmm. I believe I had a great childhood. You know, like um, my mom and my pop kept me kept me grounded. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my dad played basketball and everything. And she worked in the medical field for hip. So it, my father also worked at Harlem Hospital with respiratory. Wow. So it was like my dad worked nights, my mom worked during the day. So, you know, um, my dad used to take me to play ball different places when I was small mm. and gave me my confidence, I would say, of, as far as not being shy, just going different areas and showcasing my talent or, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to beat. Um, as far as growing up in the Bronx, you know, you... <laughs> you all get, get influenced by some, and then there's some you stay away from. Right. You know, I, mm -hmm. I was the toughest kid on the block, but I was always pretty smart, and I always could adapt to my surroundings. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, like, you know, in the Bronx, a lot of people are growing up in broken homes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you open up a home, you know, the kid tend to act out depending on which one is missing, the dad yes. or the mom. Yep. So, mm -hmm. That's you true. You know, it's, it, it, it's a lot. You know, every block have a family that's a bully, and mm -hmm. then have the, the, the kids who are better off than others. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I, I would never put myself in that category saying I was better off than anybody else, but, you know, my mm -hmm. father orientated so yeah. you know every weekend we used to go bike riding as a family from mm -hmm. one foot all the way down to central park and around central park and back wow. up to the bra uh -huh. so it became contagious where wow. other kids on the block <laughs> had they bike uh-huh and everybody called my father jim you wow. know and, uh, so it was like, it, I mean, so many people was real cool. My dad, you know, my uh -huh. dad played back of the buildings with everybody. And, right. And, you know, along with him. Mm -hmm. and, and I was, I was a, a kid that had two sides to him. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. side we on the mm -hmm. other side, I was a, a, a kid that um, people could respect. Mm -hmm. You know, um, well, I don't think I was wild. I did wild things mm -hmm. uh, with, with certain people. Sure. That's just to, uh, to be in with the pack. Mm -hmm. To do mm -hmm. it while in Rome. That's right, so, yep. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my childhood was pretty good. You know, and basketball kept me grounded. Kept me mm. grounded. Just, just looking at a lot of players where, you know, this game fascinated me so much. And then running into other kids that were good, that was bigger than me and older than me, but right. just noticing their talent. Like, I didn't know what basketball could do for me back then because I wasn't, you know, playing junior high school mm -hmm. and like that, where it was the competition and these people knew what the ball could do for you. I yeah. just played it was wrecked for me and right and i like people respect you when mm -hmm. you're good mm -hmm. so you know I, I i looked up to a lot of people i mean this basketball thing got me it navigated me through my childhood when it mm -hmm. came down to this going through the bronx right like i said 
uh, my parents, my dad used to take me to play ball when mm -hmm. we was younger. Supermarket, Pathmark, way up in the Bronx, up by Rosedale or wherever it was at. Uh -huh. We would go over there. My mom go inside with my brother to go shopping. Me and my uh -huh. dad on the court playing ball. So, yep. you know, wherever we did, wherever we went, Wagner Project, stuff like that, I played ball there with my, with my pop. Mm -hmm. And then when my pop played, I was there playing on my own. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it helped me navigate my way to the park, you know, everywhere yeah. I went, you know, I I wasn't liked, but as far as my talent, I believe I was respected. You respected, yeah, I, I, hear, I hear you, Speedy, on that. Hey, Speedy, <laughs> and, and before we begin, continue on, man, I want to shout out everybody. Unfortunately, I can't see people responding, but I know they're there. So again, guys, I appreciate everybody for responding and tuning in to check out my guy, Mr. Speedy Williams as well. Hey, Speedy, man, when do you can you pinpoint the actual age man in which you like fell in love with basketball you was like okay this is this is probably it for me i mean i'm this age you know basketball is you know what i what i was destined to do did you have like a certain age but right, or a certain you know grade in which you like fell in love with the sport wow wow i i, I want to say i fell in love with it at a nice Young age, but I, I I I believe I was kind of a late bloomer when it came down to like earning a lot of people respect. You know, like I was a uh -huh. kid trying to think exactly how old I probably was. I know I was about to go to IS four eighty three. Okay, so middle school. Okay, man. I was in middle school, but you know, I started when I was a little younger than that because right. it both from 165th in Edgecombe uh -huh. who uh, the truth, 164 uh -huh. in Edgecombe. And, and then the kid, Black Nissan from back in the days. Black oh, Nissan, like, whoa, all right. <laughs> damn, yo, ST. Man, because I lived at 165th in Edgecombe, man. Uh -huh. They talk about down in that pit. Mm -hmm. We used to go in there in the mornings. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. It, it, like <laughs> so many all over. But I was a little kid then, so you know. Right. Playing ball there, you, yeah. you, you, had to be, you had to be good to, right. to really stay. There was a lot of players playing there. Yeah. And then, you know. I, I just like I said, I, I just adapt, like adapt to you know, you make friends. Mm -hmm. Um, some people you don't realize who they are. Me, I never knew who nobody was because I, I never followed basketball, so right, it was a gift and a curse in a way uh -huh. because I never knew when I was outmatched growing mm -hmm. up, right? So, right, but as as I was getting older and getting more familiar with things. Mm -hmm. It was like, how can I put it? How can I put it? As I got older in learning what my friends did with their talent mm -hmm. and the way they used to give me props, like I was good. Right. And I'm talking about players that were a step. One of our good friends, mm -hmm. Garfield Smith. Oh, G. Smith, yes. We had him on here. He was on Transition Tuesday, yes. When I tell you, Goff used to tell me I was so aggressive and, and so good, but I didn't realize how good I was. Right. All I just wanted to do was just keep winning and, mm -hmm. and, and keep playing. Mm -hmm. Like, didn't know what the basketball could do for me. But these guys, they knew what basketball could do for them. Right. They all was going for it and everything else. Mm -hmm. Gordon Winchester, my little Gordy. guy. With yes. Ball. Yep. Like, 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 it's so many guys I could name. Like, the basketball put me with people who I would have probably never met right. just running the streets regularly. Right. And and, and I mean, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And then when it come, 
a certain caliber player, you're not just going to run against the top neighborhood guys. Mm -hmm. You're actually going to be some of these guys who have a promising future. Yeah. Where mm -hmm. They're not going to be out here playing street ball because right. during this time, they're going to these camps, top 100 and yeah. things of that. Mm -hmm. And you're running into them in their neighborhood because everybody's telling you this person's the best coming out of there. And it mm -hmm. might be a tournament that you know they have the top players and this is where I ran into a lot of people at right that or I even had a few money games where I ran into certain people sure so, you know it's like this basketball it, it, it is introduced me to so many people I mean there are people I tip my hat to right now mm -hmm. um Sam Worthen mm. so about, like, yeah a uh, little career Sam made me feel like um, that I was like one of the top guards in the city. Right. Because he explained to me that um, I didn't know how good I was. Mm -hmm. With him explaining it, in my immaturity, I still didn't know how good I was. <laughs> right, right. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And you know, <laughs> stuck by me, he made sure that, you know, he kept me working and mm -hmm. he kept me around. Next thing you know, I'm playing in the Nationals. Mm -hmm. And whose place am I taking? Mm -hmm. His. How <laughs> many? Yeah, you know? Right. He couldn't go on a trip. He had to go and coach in another country and mm -hmm. they needed a guard. And right. in between other people, and they chose me. Mm hmm that's true yeah <laughs> hey 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 speedy man i tell you so you know we all know you as you know you that you that street ball legend man you know we know that but i want and, and i and i know you can do this can you pinpoint the actual game that made you and that made a name for yourself like this this was the this was the speedy speedy Williams was born maybe during this tournament or this game like can you you think you can pinpoint that particular game or that particular tournament you you want to know why i can't pinpoint one why not i was traveling all over the play mm -hmm. so you're talking about me and my little crew from my block my man mm -hmm. keith dougie mm -hmm. uh my man dumas named rod Mm -hmm. Uh, my boy Perry, my boy Nardo, everybody know Nardo, you know, went to, um, uh, what was his school? Cause he's bragging about it. I can't even think of it right now. <laughs> College, he did uh, real good there, leading them and scoring and stuff. Uh, but, um, everywhere I went, it was like I would play in the tournaments and listen to who the people like. Right. Listen to who they is good. And you know me growing up in Michelangelo's, which is in between Merrill's project, it had Carlton Hines, mm. the McCullers, mm -hmm. you know, the Walkers, and then you talk about projects who had greats like Mikey Edwards and, mm -hmm. and God bless Bobby Jones, God mm -hmm. bless Lee Green, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. God bless Stick Kermit, Dingle. Yeah, like, like it, it's, it's, it's <laughs> then you up the street from them, you got um Ty McKelvey and them going towards uh -huh. Botanicus, and, uh -huh. and then you go another four blocks over, <laughs> you, then you got Mil Mitchell's and then Millbrook. So, you know, mm. it's Mitchell's the Stricklands from Byron, Steve, Rod, yep. you got a side you had Slick, you, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a lot of players. It's, yeah. it's a lot of players that played the game that was talented. Yeah. It was recognized collegially for their talent. Right, so right. Mm -hmm. Big Millbrook, you had Muno with the UTEP. Uh, man, like, like I, 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 you could go on for days when it comes down to players right. coming out. The but I'm in between Patterson and Melrose. So every day, 
I'm playing those two places. Right. The, in famous Clark Park, where everybody came from all over the Bronx to come down and play in this little park. Mm -hmm. Everybody bring their fives. You went into all type of talent. And right. then up in Merrill, oh, God bless you, had Carlton Hines, yeah. who basically opened up the doors for a lot of kids. You know, Absolutely. He's one of the first kids to ever have a Division One coach come himself to the projects. Wow. To right. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. So, you know, in, in all of these guys, I basically played with. Right. Andre McCullough, their nephew made it to the league. Um, I mean, all of these guys, I actually played with and against. And, so, you, and, and, and I know you being modest too, Speedy. You gave them the business. Yeah, you, come on, Speedy. I, I know you, brother. I, I know the, the way the way you the way you win at catch. You gave them the business. I say it for you, Speedy. I know you modest. I'll, I'll be honest with you. If you ask guys, mm -hmm. guys will say that I did work, mm -hmm. but they will never admit that I was doing work to them. Right. Because everybody feel that they. You know, I could name the people that gave me work, you know, because my friends would let me know. Right. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when I tell you I went to everybody hood, and I'm not bragging, mm -hmm. but I swear on my father, uh -huh. I went to everybody else's hood, and I could go in their own hood and be one of the first 10 people picked if they was running a fall, mm -hmm. which is because I'm not crazy. from but they accepted me as being one of their best players that come around their neighborhood. Right. I did it in Addison. I did it in Melrose. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I went, I got recognized. And in whatever best tournament was in that hood, mm -hmm. I played in it. Nine times out of 10, I either won the chip or lost in the championship. Yep. And Guys feel to realize that I'm scraped six feet right. tall. Right. And I used to play more aggressive and bigger than what I was. Right. And a lot of people just don't want to give me my just due. Right. But, oh, soul in a hole. I went out there. <laughs> Guys just threatened me. Yo, right. get your hand on Elma Anderson. <laughs> you know, like, like, Screaming at me from the sideline. Yo, yeah. Me. It's tough but, to play. It's tough to play over there. <laughs> we get in that huddle. I be like, yo, James Ryan, eh, make sure nothing happened to me. I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, you know, just, just make sure I'm all right. Right. You know, when this game is over, but we're we, we going to come in here. We're coming in here to win. So right. tournaments like Hole in a hole, Ajax Park. I went to everybody, ISA. I went to everybody's hood and mm -hmm. played in every tournament. Right. You know, Allen, I'm out there in what is it, the Rising Stars tournament, mm -hmm. and, which was on the pier. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know how many times I won the tournament, right. but I know I won the two or three times. Sure. So yeah. then, you know, you're always running into a Brooklyn team in the championship. Mm -hmm. You know how they are. They they had a kid named Arthur. Uh huh. People call him Boo. This guy uh -huh. used to wear the gun like Kwame. Right. <laughs> him, him, and my boy Bobby. God bless his soul, Bobby mm -hmm. Lewis, whose daughter played for St. John's. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now. Right. But that was my boy. But those were my two guys who I would battle every day. Sure. You know, Bruce Williams, um, the guy who used to run the uh, PSAL, signing uh, officials or something, Donald mm -hmm. Douglas. Okay. So, you know, he recently passed off, you know. Yeah. Bless him. But, yeah. you know, that was my boy, and all of these guys were older than me, and I was playing against them. And, mm -hmm. like I said, guys would tell you, like, they would say that I played good, but they would never say that I was giving them service. Right, right. I, I, I can name a lot of guys who right now, they'll probably approach me being <laughs> funny or approach me being different. But back then, 
you know how you could sense when somebody was scared of you? If you're oh, yeah. scared of you, this, you know, respected you to the utmost. Right. There's so right. many people respect today that I had nervous of guarding me. Right. Or I just used to come with that pressure all the time to them. So, you know, it, it, I mean, yep. everybody's hurt. 145th yep. Street Park. I uh, played the. I, I played up in battlegrounds. I, I played everywhere, you know. Brooklyn. Right. I was in Wingate Park. I I, I played in everybody else could in all the boroughs. Right. In the neighboring states. So right. you know, it, it was like everywhere I went in Connecticut near Pro Am, they still talk about how I was going up against the kid Michael Williams and mm -hmm. and and they had uh what's the big kid? Marcus Campy. Oh um, Big article in the paper going against Ray Allen, mm -hmm. you know. It, 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 <laughs> like, 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 I ran into so many people that could actually play the game. Mm -hmm. I can't yeah. think of official name. It's Mike something. He's in the NBA right now, one of the top officials. He's mm. from the Maryland area. I played okay. in the pro am down in Maryland. Um, Joe Smith and all of them, whatever. Okay. But he. <laughs> Me a tech, <laughs> right? And he'll met because <laughs> I was real boisterous, and, yeah, you know, very boisterous. Mainly when you when you have a, a pretty good knowledge of the game, mm -hmm. and I knew in the game everything was angles. Yeah. So I used to take advantage of the fact that back in the days it used to only be two refs. Yep. So they can't see everything, right? Right, Speed. They can't see everything. <laughs> That's so right. me, I used to, I used to deny my the point guard the ball. Yeah. Whoever I was guarding, I denied the ball. The referees run up court with the ball. Mm -hmm. The next person is bringing it up. <laughs> me, I, I make sure my man don't be in the play. I stop him in his tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Once I see him turn his and start running up the court, I stop short in front of my man and I hold him in the back court with me for. a an extra yeah. 10 or four or five seconds, whatever it may be. Right. But I know it Because, you know, sure. I played a lot with people meant to. Right. Nine out of 10, you see this little skinny, light-skinned kid. Right. <laughs> being extra with you. Yep. You, you think basketball, you all of a sudden, you think, oh, I guess you're a street mentality. Right. With me, hey. I <laughs> right. Hey, so Speed, I wanted to ask you, man. So, like, yeah, you play with that toughness and that intensity. Where did that come from, man? Did that come from your pops? Did that come from the streets? Because that's what you did. I mean, you played with that intensity. You you took cats out of their game, you know, out of their mental. You messed with them. You know, I would hate to see if I had to go against you, Speed. I might have to swing at you. So, you know what I mean? You know, you we might be kids, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Where, where did that come from, man? Where did that tenacity and toughness come from, man? All right, so I might think it was passed down. The, the difference between me and my pops is my pops had a short temper. He's a, a little bit shorter than me. And um, I think he had a Napoleon complex mm -hmm. because my father, he boxed in the army. Wow. Um, he, he was a strict parent. All right. And there he is. So whenever, I'll just give you a situation. Um, mm -hmm. Family in the car, we driving. Mm -hmm. Car cuts my father off without a signal. Ooh. My pops up, get on the side of him and say, you need to watch where you're going, whatever the case may be. Right. The guy's coming back to my father in the window. Uh-oh. Stop at a light. Stop uh -oh. at the red light. Over 155th, <laughs> stop at the red light, oh. stop at the bite out. Um, the guy gets out the car because my father, you know, cut him back off. Right. The guy gets out the car. My father gets out the car. And my father's short. Uh -huh. So as the guy walks up to him, and whatever he was about to scream or whatever, and my pops just two peeps. Gave him the two pieces of the biscuit? He gave him the two pieces of the biscuit, huh? 
So my father boxed in the army, mm -hmm. and then he was an MP. So it wasn't even a, a real fight. Right. It, my father got in the car, and we drove around them. And that was a bad incident because every time something like that happened, all I could remember is my mom screaming, going, James, stop. Yeah. James, stop. Right. You, you know, some, there, been, there was incidents that I've caused mm -hmm. where, you know, my father, you know, almost got arrested. Where, you know, mm -hmm. you real small or three, sure. four, five years old. And, I, I pressed the button on the pinball machine and somebody game stuff. Oh. So the guy, you know, the guy give you the little, you know, it was a man. He right. gave me the little nudge. Uh oh. Right. It, you know, I was real small then. Right. And I was over to my father crying, and my father's in the bowling alley with his friends Lucky and them, their big one forty fifth softball. And all I remember is my father going back over there and asking the guy, what if somebody nudged you in the head like that? Mm -hmm. After that, when the guy went to give a rebuttal, my <laughs> father would people. But I could tell it was something that was big back in that era because that's what Kev Williams used to do and Steve Burke. Right, <laughs> right, right. They, they say one thing and they don't give you a chance to answer. No. <laughs> bam, bam, right there on you. Yeah. yeah, so I think I picked up his Napoleon complex of being, you know, I was not the biggest person. Um, I was short, mm -hmm. so I was always extra aggressive. Right. So I think I just that part from my father. And yeah. then when I watch people go into a shell, like when a person don't know you mm -hmm. and you're the aggressor, they either going to step their game up mm -hmm. or they're going to fall back. Yep. They're going to wilter. Right. A lot of people, I would say, fell back. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't fault them in a way. Right. Because at the time, I was better than what I thought I was. Like, mm -hmm. I always thought I was average, but my aggression. And my determination changed yeah. the game yep. a lot. Definitely. I, I, I wasn't meeting nobody at half court. Nah. It was like, right at school, I'm turning around and I'm looking for my man. And I'm guarding you baseline to baseline. Yep. Yep. You shake me in the back court. I catch up to you before you yep. make it to the three line or the five mm -hmm. line or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and I had extra energy, so I wasn't getting tired. Right, right. And, it was my determination. I just think I came up in a time where, you know, that mindset was like totally different. Yeah. Nah, I hate I hate you, Speedy, man. Nah, cause you you were that dude, man. You you were definitely that dude. You you that little gnat, man. I'm telling you, Speedy. I'm telling you, if I would have got you, man, I don't know, man. I, I can't swing at my kinfolk, but I, I think you would have got me in that boat. You would you would have got me off my game, man. And that's what you did, you know. That you know, you played that to your advantage too, man. Hey, Speedy, man, let's talk about, because we talked about it earlier, Above the Rim. Now, how did you get involved with that iconic movie? You know, talk to me about that. And how did that opportunity take place for you, man? How did you get involved with that? Wow, that is, that's amazing, because you want to know what's so funny? Mm -hmm. I played in the Peter Vesey three-on-three tournament with my okay. partner, Seth Marshall, Don Chung, and my man, Mike. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, nobody on our team is over... Six three, six four. Mm -hmm. I don't think Seth Marshall was six four exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, and we won the whole tournament. And I'm talking about there were players in the tournament. And after we won, Peter Bessie, Rod Strickland, Dwayne Martin took pictures with us and everything. We won our little mm -hmm. boom boxes and whatever the whatever the the, the tournament was for. Uh huh. And my next time really running into Dwayne outside of, you know, just traveling, uh -huh. it was always, they was auditioning for Above the Rim. Mm. And they was taking the teams that won 
the Pro Am, okay, the and you know they were just like in the championship teams. So it just so happened that year, I think I was on like two or three of the championship teams at one. Wow. Okay. And it, it, it wasn't like I was just a part to the team. Yeah. I don't want to honk. I always feel I'm only as good as my teammates. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, I might have got an MVP or two that year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or at um, Pro-Am, I was definitely like a major piece to the puzzle mm -hmm. with our team. And when they asked me to play myself in the movie that was big you know like you're right Dwayne talking to me like i i knew Dwayne for years uh -huh. you know it's so happened i'm like that Dwayne martin and it, it was just really cool like mm -hmm. to play myself in the movie even right. though the, the, the the filming of it was mm -hmm. during the going into september october november type thing and, right you know it was bad um, Tupac was going through court situations. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. so it, it was a lot of things. You know, we had to wait for the court thing to be finished, and mm -hmm. then they had to cut certain scenes. It was a lot of scenes that was cut or altered. You mm -hmm. know, but for the most part, it was it was it was a lot of fun because now I'm filming a right. movie on a court where I just got through. Kill yeah, you saw you, yeah, you, yeah, place where you get, we use killer cat. Hey, hey, Speedy, clear up a rumor for me because, you know, I, I'm like a basketball snob when it comes to movies, like the choreography and all, like, like, like loving basketball. You know, Omar Epps was terrible in that. He, he wasn't believable. Shania, Shania Nathan was believable, I think, personally. But again, I want to talk about Above the Rim. Now, you got to clear up this rumor for me because I had conversations with people. Those rims look, Mighty low. I, I remember one scene. Did you catch a dunk <laughs> one of those things? Like, talk to me about that, man. Come on, man. Because you know I'm a basketball star. I see. I notice these things, man. Talk to me a little bit about that, dog. So you already know that the rims in Fifty Fifth, the old rims, mm -hmm. there was a metal backboard. There were metal rims. Right. So. I'm not going to say that the rim is not exactly 10 feet. Okay. <laughs> going towards the handball court. Mm -hmm. The one going towards 8th Avenue, mm -hmm. remember, is, is on a slope. That's so right. you're running down the hill, and then you jump in, <laughs> makes it look like you got crazy hops. <laughs> That's right. That's right, yo. <laughs> so, so, you know, like, because you won't believe how many people couldn't duck. Mm, so, mm -hmm. right. And, 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 and you know, they, when they was choreographing certain dunk scenes, yeah. they had to use certain people. Like my right. man Johnny Walker, the fireman, he had to, we had to do his scene like a couple of times, but Johnny, super athletic. So he was able to catch the dunk. Right, um, right. If you watch the movie, you can see where they was cutting parts and putting parts together. Yeah. Scene, scene over. Right. You know, and you know, I had my boy Ken Bannum in there. Like it, it, it was a lot. It was a lot of fun. Mainly yeah. doing the choreograph where they had me bouncing the ball off the backboard. Right. And right. Then, Okay, did everything. Yeah, I know you caught one. I saw that. I saw that speed. You caught a nice one. I remember that. I was like, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize it, right? So I, I, I I'll tell it here first. Okay, I'm like, there's an exclusive. You give me exclusive on Treasures of Tuesday. Okay, cool. What you got, man? Everybody that knows me growing up, which is a handful of people that really know me, right? That grew up. They will tell you that I was athletic. Mm -hmm. They will all tell you that I was athletic. Right. I won a dunk contest at my college. Wow. So it, it wasn't it wasn't nothing real. People were like, oh, Speedy was just quick and Speedy was just fast. Right. I just, two points was two points to me. Right. It, my thing was talking crazy to people. Yes. So, so people, 
you know, some people be like, oh yeah, I bust your butt, whatever, whatever. I was talking to people while I was playing against them. Yep. To make them hate me. And the people that they're, that's on their side, to make them know that I'm better than that person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's, if you're hearing me talking to your man all crazy, and you got faith in your man, but I'm still getting the best of him. If you like your man, <laughs> you're gonna have a special love for me. Right. <laughs> what I do. So <laughs> that, that's how I always looked at everybody I ever played against. Like, mm-hmm. man, listen, they like this guy. After I dismantle this dude, and I'm gonna talk to him more crazy. Cause me, I didn't back then it wasn't like um when you played ball, you you had to be somebody's friend. Right, right now, I wasn't about that. I I used to leave games in tournaments and not say nothing to some of the people that was on my team. Right. <laughs> because I go in, another, in another tournament, I'm playing against them. Yeah. So yep. I never wanted to be nobody's friend. Right, not so friendly, it was, right. Mm-hmm. It was like a selective few, but they had to be from the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. They wasn't from the neighborhood. If they wasn't somebody that gravitated to me friendly, it was like, oh, so what? And yeah. then I'm extra aggressive with them. Right. But, mm-hmm. you know, that, that turned out to be my downfall. You know, like, so many people became cool with me later on in my career mm-hmm. that now when I play against them, I don't play against them with that same... Right. That, that 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 same disrespect. Like right. Like 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 when guys run into me, if they know me and I know you, so be it. We just know each other. End of the mm-hmm. day, you're not gonna like me because of the way I'm going at you. Right. And after I know you and we got like a, a friendship and stuff, now I can't go at you the same way like I would normally do. Right. That and, edge is taking off, right? That edge, right? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it took off an edge. It took off an edge, it, 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 and I paid for it one year. In mm-hmm. that, in that, um, in that dog on uh, that that Nike thing that uh-huh. when I lost to uh, General Electric. Oh, the GE, yeah. huh? Oh man, shout out the GE. Yeah, like, like, like it, it was different when I did the the McDonald thing. You know, the last man standing. Right. Because Somebody put fuel in my fire, you know, like 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 Troy Bowers that worked with the Knicks. Yes. He came me up telling me, yo, Speedy, we're coming through Manhattan. This one-on-one tournament, you need to be in it. I'm telling you, you can win it. And yes. I'm like, I, I, you know, I wasn't doing all of that. Like, I'm a mm-hmm. good one-on-one player, but I wasn't yes. doing all of that. Right. And he kept me and then they went from Connecticut, they got down in Manhattan. Yep. And Manhattan's supposed to be the toughest borough. Yeah. So and you I know what I remember up. about that too, Speedy, is when you won that one, I remember we I did the championship ring for you, though. So the ring that you got, I did yes. yeah, I remember that yeah. the last man standing. That's right. Absolutely. Right. Hey Speedy, man, couple more questions I got for you, man. Hey, um, what are some lessons that you think basketball has taught you that you could pass on to others? What, what what have been some life lessons that basketball have taught you, man? Oh man! <laughs> First of all, never underestimate your opponents. Mm-hmm. It taught me that, but I I just felt that so many people slept on me because they judge you by what school you went to. Yeah. Vision you played mm-hmm. when you went to school. Did you start? Did you come off the bench? Mm-hmm. All of that to me is, in a way, politics. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Some people, some people was dealt a good hand, and then some people took control of their situation. Right. Not everybody could take control of their situation. Mm-hmm. Not everybody has the know-how or have the people in their corner to accomplish these things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. with that being said, like I've learned 
that a lot of people underestimated me. And at the end of the day, I might have cost one or two people a job going anywhere, mm -hmm. you know, because of the way I attacked the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and on my part, underestimating people also, like, it, it brings people into your life that you never get a second chance in a first impression. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. No um, doubt about it. Cool. With, with that being said, because I was never groomed the right way when it came to basketball, mm -hmm. I had great work ethics because yep. I loved to run. I was mm -hmm. always competitive. Mm -hmm. Drill work is it, a given to me. I'm planning mm -hmm. to come in first everything when it can comes down to conditioning and things of that nature. Right. The bad part to it was what I said. You never get a second chance at a first impression. Yeah. So if I show you that I'm not prompt or what might be important to you, I might not see that same importance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That person is going to judge you by that. Mm -hmm. Me, I did it in college. I had a, I didn't eat all day. I show up to one of my games and I'm <laughs> eating a sandwich with lamp line. <laughs> Nobody does that. No, I, I, I never heard of that. He, if I was playing in some big Division One school, right. a, a big coach, Coach K or somebody, right. you think I'd have been able to have a sandwich on the layup line? No way. Get it being Coach K at any any level, major. right? Yeah. So, so you know, so the people that's there that sees that they see something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it, it's it's like. It's like <laughs> certain things you 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 pay for. Right. No, I hear you. I hear you, man. I and I heard I heard Steve Harvey in the background too, so I know you watch Steve. <laughs> hey, but but no. hey, I, I, hey, hey, Speedy, I'll get you out on this one, my brother. So hey man, do you have any regrets in your playing career at all? Any regrets, man? Like something if you had to do over again, but do you have any regrets, man, in your playing career? Listen, my one regret is I didn't start, I mean, I didn't finish what I've started. Mm -hmm. I could have taken my talents a lot further than where I did take it. Mm -hmm. and, and I had people in my corner telling me to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And still, and still um, things did not work out good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Like yeah. They they told me, oh, go and try to go overseas mm -hmm. because I chose not to. Mm -hmm. um, I chose to stay home yeah. and, you know, provide for my daughter yeah. as I had a, had a little girl. Sure. And her mother was not, her mother was not trying to hear me go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I... Mm -hmm. I kept telling somebody, the coaches, that I was on my way, and then I didn't show up. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the CBA might have picked up the most players ever. Chris Childs, a few people got picked up that. Year. That's right. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know, who's to say that I wouldn't have panned out as a as one of the gods. That's right. A lot of That's true. And That's the point. Under a coach like Sam Worthy, you know, some people, you know, kids make this mistake all the time. They go to a school because the school is on TV, mm -hmm. but not realize that the type of player that they are, are they a uh, running gun? Are they slashers? Are, are they smart players that does half court, that can play the mm -hmm. half court game? Mm -hmm. You know, you got to go to who that best fits your talent. Yeah. So this way, to shop you around. This yeah. can exploit your talent. But, you know, 
a lot of kids make the mistake they rather go to a school where their friends could see them. Yeah. But you know, a school like St. John's is uh, at the time a half court school. Yeah, absolutely. One, yeah. B goes pro. Mm -hmm. Well, Barry's the and nothing but point guards come out of St. John's. Yeah, Mark so, Jackson's. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're talking about you're talking about the one and the three. But if you're a slasher with no real jump shot, why would you go there? Right. When they have, so, so that's that was my thing. Like mm -hmm. me, I could have went. And I had the right coach that was there. And I probably would have been able to showcase my talent and went further. Mm -hmm. And I chose not to go nowhere because um, my daughter was just born. And yep. mm -hmm. I, I chose to stay home. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I could have just, just weathered the storm. Right. Have a hard a break, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. but not pass up on the opportunity to go further in basketball. Right. You know, but no big regret. Cause, nah, um, not at all. Nah, because the, the you know, you're Speedy, man, you are that legend, man. You are that legend. You know what I mean? It's documented on film. It's documented above the rim. And, you know, you, you got that aura. Like, Speedy, there's an aura around you, Speedy, man. You know, and today, I just want to be that person to give you your flowers. You know what I mean? Because I know you're a humble guy. I know you're a humble guy and a humble cat. But I know you did some things. I, you put in work. And you did work. And you put in work with these cats, you know? So I just want to be that person to give you your flowers while you can smell them. You know what I mean? So, so, so yeah. Speedy, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate you for coming on, my brother. You know what I mean? This was this was a long time coming. I had to get you on because my boy Blackjack, you know our boy Blackjack Ryan, he said you gotta have Speedy on here. I said okay, I gotta get Speedy on here. So I gotta give props to Blackjack Ryan too, man, for having you on, brother, man. I appreciate Yo, I, you, man. I, I didn't tell you about Blackjack. I know. Blackjack, uh huh. He was he was real deal, like mm -hmm. one of the. Two, three white boys in my whole career that I have to sit up there and tip my hat to and honestly respect. Right. Because I I, I tore Blackjack shirt off his back right. and everything else. And I was so mean to him. Right. And we became best of friends. Best of friends, I mean, right? To, to, to the point where he, when he started show basketball and and, and and guys used to try to tease and taunt him. Like, it was a guy that used to snap on him or whatever. Um, and I used to snap that guy for Blackjack because at the end of the day, I, 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 I had to show loyalty to Blackjack because the person was just being a bully. Right. But at the end of the day, you know, Blackjack had a skill and a talent, and he just kept getting better and better like a yeah. sponge. He just kept soaking up everything that right. was around, learned how to entertain, mm -hmm. and we became a one-two punch. I, I know. Wish, I wish that I would have kept it going. You know, me, you know, I, I, I was all over the place then. Right. But Blackjack was a lot more focused when it came down to bettering himself with all the tricks and the antics and mm -hmm. i was just good at talking and making people feel comfortable so mm -hmm. you know i i was like the motivator the, right the, you know i get the crowd all into it i get people uh -huh. looking forward to the next thing that's about to come out my mouth right you know, and, right you know, and kids gravitated to me so you know i stuck with it you know it's yeah, something yeah. that I thank God for giving me the know-how to intrigue kids' curiosity to make them want to learn or get better. So, you yeah. know, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm back into it on a low. You know, I, I, right. I train and everything, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just don't give it to everybody because, you know, sure. there's a lot of people that says things. And, right. And I hate finding out, you know, my friends that, or your boys while you're around them and then when you're not around them they got their own little thing to say and then they don't yeah. think it get back to you and it's mm -hmm. a mutual friend that brings it back and right. you don't want to say 
So I just leave it at that. You know, I'm just out here having fun. There you go. Um, I, 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 I'm out here. I, I motivate the kids. I still play against them. Right. Um, I'm, I got my record still going at my college with the one-on-one -on -one against the college kids. There you go. And, uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll see me at my last hurrah probably this summer because, you know, I'm playing in all the leagues and everything. Right. Yeah, play one game, two games, because a lot of people see that I'm still in the all right shape. I'm not in great shape, but I'm in right. decent shape out there and uh, play four minutes. There you go. <laughs> well, Speedy, man. My... Yeah, yeah, man. Hey, Speedy, man. Hey, man. Again, man, I just want to give you your flowers, man, so you can smell them. Yo, keep inspiring the youth of what you do, man. You know, keep being that beacon of light, man, because that's what you are. And game recognized game, and people recognize that man. Keep inspiring, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a I'm a watch I'm gonna watch above the rim tonight. You know what I mean? And for my man Speedy, I'm gonna check out Speedy's defensive prowess and even catch him on that sneak dunk too, man. All right, so 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 you cleared up that rumor, my man Speedy, brother. Hey, hey, man, Merry you know Merry Christmas, Happy Happy New Year to you, brother, man. Happy holidays to you and your family, man. And this was great having you on, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you welcome, time. man. All right, man. It's to you too. Absolutely, man. All right, Speedy. Thanks, brother. One. All right. <laughs>